There we go. See, I did do a really good intro to uh, introduction to it. The following podcast is recommended for mature audiences only. The following podcast is recommended for adults only. Maturity is not a requirement. Hello and welcome to episode 78 of Dear Download, a podcast about Download Festival, music and the industry, and all other aspects related to rock and heavy metal. This episode is about none of them. Well, kind of half, half of one of them. This episode, we have an old friend of mine who does his own podcast about wrestling. Stu from the Top Turnbuckle podcast. That's coming up later. I am Adam, and as always, I am here with Simon. How are you doing, my man? Okay, well, this is awkward. I got a little bit too cocky, maybe, with with boasting about how good an intro I did. Or you know, presuming I would do a good intro, because we recorded the intro and the outro after we recorded with Stu. And it turns out that some of our audio has had a problem. So uh, there is no intro. Just me. No Simon. In fact, I can tell you what happened. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I was going to actually say exactly what the problem was uh or just leave it vague like a lot of people do but um but yeah so, uh so like i said we we recorded the intro and outro uh after recording with Stu. simon uh we recorded with Stu absolutely fine simon sent me the audio he sent me a file with his intro and outro um but it wasn't an audio file it was some kind of text file so uh i did there might be a way of recovering it or changing the file type but i haven't had a chance to have a look um and uh, he's obviously clearly busy with baby things getting everything ready when we spoke on wednesday they hadn't had the baby yet uh i don't know if they have yet but i mean there's lots of lots and lots of things involved around having a baby that you gotta get ready for ready before anyway so uh yeah so you'll hear that um like i said i got a bit too cocky i was like yes what a great intro this was uh, when I obviously I, I cannot use any of it, and and the outro uh, is exactly the same. Uh, I don't have any audio for Simon. Uh, I will. I'll include the important bits like the um, Patreon names, but uh, other than that, there's probably nothing else I can actually include. I'll listen to it and see what I can uh, include in that. But um, yes, very awkward indeed. I apologise. Um, Stu was great. If you want to find more about um him or his, his podcast it'll be in the episode notes um but yeah so so with, without babbling on anymore here is the interview with Stu. okay as i just said in the intro that we haven't actually recorded yet we this episode we are <laughs> twat i'm sorry this episode we are joined by uh, an old friend of mine Stu, who is uh and you can correct me if i'm wrong on any of these i'll give you a chance to um introduce yourself and everything you do in a minute um but Stu is one of the three hosts is it from the top turnbuckle podcast that's correct excellent uh do you know what i don't want to make any mistakes why don't you tell everyone who you are and what you do a little bit hi i'm Stu. i'm one of three hosts from top turnbuckle podcast with my two co-hosts james and johnny um we we get together once a month um talk crap about wrestling um come up with different topics we try to get as much interaction with the listeners as well and just yeah it's just it's just all for nostalgia reasons more than anything else nice well we have a lot of wrestling fans in uh in our discord we have a whole section dedicated to wrestling and pretty much everyone i know is has has been or is a wrestling fan at some point so this should hopefully tickle the the um the listens of our uh listeners one of our co- one of our co-hosts johnny is actually an ex indie circuit wrestler oh my god oh, okay nice. that's even better you've got someone <laughs> um, has, who is in the industry yeah and has worked with a few big names that are still around now nice that's awesome awesome uh i'm not going to ask you about that if you want to hear more about that go over and uh listen yeah <laughs> yeah go and Definitely. listen any idea roughly what episode people should listen to to hear about that or should just listen to all of them Start from the beginning. We, ha- <laughs> we yeah, work your way through. We, we, 
we haven't covered Johnny's career as of yet. Oh, um, but it, it is in the pipeline. Exclusive we have talked then. about it many times. Mm. So yes, it is in the pipeline at the moment. Now we'll talk about it here first, then. Um. <laughs> no, just no, ruin it. No, we won't. Just steal that <laughs> content straight your away. Episode for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So uh, I'm going to be completely honest, straight out of the bat. I am not the biggest wrestling fan. Um, really anymore. I used to watch it a lot when, I mean, it was a long time ago, back when uh, it was The Rock versus Stone Cold. Um, was that 20 years? 20 years ago, was it? <laughs> when, uh, more than that now. Probably more than that. Um, I, personally, I, I just felt like it became more of a soap than anything, uh, with, with too much in between the matches. But uh, as but I know a lot of people like it, and I know a lot of our listeners like it. And as soon as, soon as I saw that you'd started your podcast, I think I reached out to you like, within the first month and said we should do a yeah, collaboration right. episode yeah because um because there's a big crossover between rock music and wrestling uh well the fact that well, we, had, we had a bit of a chat before before recording but the fact that they had wrestling at download as well actually we'd never spoke about that but yeah they yeah, had wrestling yeah. at download um yeah. some of the biggest memories or biggest things as far as i was aware like with the crossover of rock music is um obviously the game by Motorhead was Triple H's theme tune for a long time. That was huge. Um, Kid Rock, who isn't isn't uh, as popular as he was back then, <laughs> was uh, the Undertaker's um, theme. Uh, one of my favourite bands, Saliva, have had several songs in wrestling. So, so yeah, I thought it'd be a good episode to um, have a bit of a chat about the whole thing. We've we got a few a few things written down, but uh, as you just heard about the what we, what we forgot about. Down, wrestling being at download there's many things that we haven't thought of that we'll probably end up talking about so uh <laughs> it's a good point though about download because what other what other festival which would wwe actually do something at but a grievo metal festival like that yeah. is that is that's your core one of your core audience surely that's it's good the, yeah the, the pair go hand in hand they do yeah proper but then that leads us on to the transition where just quickly for listeners, we did talk briefly before, and you said that you have been to some downloads before. Which down? Yeah, you, absolutely. Which downloads have you been to in the past? Uh, I went to the very first one. Nice. That's old school. I like yeah, it. Many, many, many moons yeah. back when it was a two-day festival. Um, and yeah, got incredible. Do remember being incredibly excited to see uh, Limp Biscuit. That would have been for the first time. Yeah. And then they pulled right. out. Yeah. <laughs> But they did save Download Festival, so for doing that, so you should be yep. thankful to Limp Bizkit. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Do you have any other memories of the first one? Because I don't have many. We've talked about that lots of times. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one, the biggest one that springs to mind was uh, I was oh god, what were their names? Society One. Oh yeah. Um, not a massive fan of the band, but the fact that the lead singer was suspended on suspended by the stage with two or four meat hooks in his back uh, while he was swinging out over the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that um, yeah, that was two thousand five. That wasn't the first mm. one, but yes, that is one of the most memorable and weirdest things I've ever seen at Download. <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, that was brutal. I remember they said they were going to uh, do it. They said on Scuzz they were like, oh, he's gonna. He's going to do it. And we were, I was thinking, oh, he was going to do it for like a minute. But he'd done it for like half the set. I was like, what the hell? I was going to say, it was at least, yeah, three, four songs. Yeah, long time. <laughs> it was weird. Um, cool. Uh, what other ones have you been to? Do you, do you remember? Um, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Metallica. Uh, I can't remember the year, but it would have been the year that they headlined as a full lineup for the first time. But they've done. Oh, that was 2006. Scaring, scaring the living hell out of a group of kids that were in front of me. <laughs> you, can, you can't say that and move on. You got to tell us a bit more about that now. <laughs> uh, right. My my favorite metallic album of all time will always be Master of Puppets, and obviously there was there were rumors floating around that they were going to do something special at the time, and obviously they came on, sung a few songs, went off, and then the big screen at the back started showing video montages of uh, back in the day and then the big letters came up and there in its entirety mm. Metallica presents Master of Puppets and I decided in a slightly inebriated state to shout out holy shit I'm going to jizz the fuck everywhere <laughs> <laughs> 
and then looked in front of me and saw there was a group of about eight or nine kids <laughs> stood there just looking at me. Um, and a slightly disgruntled parent. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if there was a man behind me saying, I'm going to jizz everywhere, I would probably be like, whoa! Okay, time to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Is your name Till Linderman? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh God! I, the um, my standout band for that year was Alice in Chains, though mm. it was the first time I got to see him, um, and it was also the first time I got to see William Duval sing with them. Yeah, um, and they were just mind blowing. It was, it was, it gen- for me, it was something purely magical, absolutely amazing thing to watch. Yeah, I love a bit of Alice in Chains. Oh, massive, massive fan of them. Awesome. Any more? So it's oh three and oh six. Uh, yeah, that was six. Yeah. 2009 was the last one I went to, which for me will always be my absolute favourite one. Yeah, I think it's, I think, I think it's everyone's <laughs> favourite one. <laughs> Literally, everyone that's been to it's, Download, if you ask them their favourite years, I bet you if you ask five people, at least three of them are going to say Download 2009. Uh, it's, that was the, the, at the three times that I've been, I think that was the first time I bought a ticket solely on one band being announced. <laughs> Who, who who were? And that was Faith No More. Oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm going. I'd agree. Take the money. I'd agree Thanks. with that. If, if Faith No More announced any festival now, I would purchase a ticket without even thinking. Yeah, uh, just absolute legends. Do, do, Mike Patton for me is just a vocal god. Oh man, I saw Mr. Bungle this year, and that flipped me inside and out. I could not believe oh, I was seeing man. Mr. Bungle because I'm such a huge Mike Patton fan. I was just like. Oh my god, this guy can literally just do anything. Like he is a god. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, man, the man can do do no wrong. Yeah, yeah. Everything he creates, no matter how fucking weird it is, it's always really, really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like you said, the weird stuff that he he's, he, bang, he bangs out. I mean, even as terrible as the film Place Beyond the Pines was, the soundtrack was phenomenal, <laughs> and that was him. You know, it was just, just, just. Ah, he's brilliant. Absolutely. I genuinely, I could gush about Mike Patton for hours. <laughs> just, just do a podcast about being Mike Patton fans. We'll do it. Just me and you. <laughs> just talk about Mike Patton for like two hours an episode. <laughs> uh, Sold. I don't know why that reminded me, but does, do any of you two like Nine Inch Nails? No. Yeah. Because they just um, been announced to do the next tr- Tron soundtrack. Yes, I read that. Which, um, um, I went to see him at the Eden Project last oh. year. Amazing. Amazing. That's a bucket list one for me, TikTok. Oh my god, yeah. I've never seen Nine Inch Nails. I would be thrilled to see Nine Inch Nails. Oh my god. I've never seen Tron. You've never seen Tron? What no? What? <laughs> Any of them. Really? Really? Yeah, really? There's only two. Wow. But... Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, you, you <laughs> definitely should watch them. That the first one's like a really weird eighties B movie weird effects. It's trippy yeah. and then the second one is like an amazing one of the nicest looking films you've ever seen with a daft punk soundtrack it's they're both so different yeah. but so yeah. good the in their own ways only released recent or well, fairly recently wasn't it last like five, 2011 years. so not yeah okay. still quite i mean it's crazy yeah, so like recently was, and in your head yeah. you think 2011 that's recent it's, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it's like not. ages ago now isn't it <laughs> Um, so yeah, yes, it is my kind of film. I don't know why I've not watched it. Uh, yeah, I should. You, you love I it. Should. You know, I, I saw would. the I saw saw Tron Legacy, the second one, in the cinema in 3D, and that was mind blowing. I I wish I'd gone to see that in the cinema in 3D. Yeah, dude, you know, it, I was I was I was so dead against it when it first came out, and then finally watching it on a large TV yeah. screen, I was kicking myself, the, absolutely kicking myself. The way they used the space in the 3D, and the way they sort of like. 3D doesn't work for all movies that I've seen, but for that film, holy hell, that yeah, really worked for th- in 3D. I was blown away. Yeah, m- most films just have like one scene where they fire a bullet at the screen or something to make you go, whoa, <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole 3D part of the film. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it is a bit shit. Um, what were we saying about... So anyway, transition back to Download. Do you have any plans to return to Download in the near future? Are you thinking about getting back at any point? <sighs> I, do you know what, and this is going to, might annoy quite a few of your listeners. Um, 
I haven't been to download since 2009 because genuinely I thought the lineup sucked ever since. What, every single one? <laughs> oh my God, there's been some great lineups since Is then. It? I can, some years, I know, I some know. years I can understand, but others I'm like, how can you not like that? <sighs> I think it's just, oh, do you know, it, I think it's just me getting older. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm 42 now. Um, however, I am buying my Bloodstock ticket in a little uh-huh, while. Yes. Um, and that is my first time going to Bloodstock as well. So I can't oh, really cover that, Bloodstock mate. now um, anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're a we're, Bloodstock we're, podcast we're, as well yeah, now. about that in a minute. <laughs> 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 but, um, it's, I think there's been more bands that I'm not that keen on or not that bothered about or bands that I've seen way too many times yeah, already. Fine. Yeah. And it's just kind of go. Oh, do I really want to spend uh, that amount of money for the past, the camping, everything else, the travel for bands that I've seen? Uh, mm. Do you know what? I'll wait for them to tour on their yeah, own. Yeah, that's that's. Um, so it's yeah, it's not yeah. It's, I'll rephrase that. It's not that I think every year has sucked, um, but there's just been a majority of it that I've kind of gone. Just yeah, not enough. Really. Yeah. So I mean, who, to be fair, who, um, who yeah. sucked you in for I Bloodstock don't... this year then to make you go for the first time? Machine Head. Machine, Machine Head. head. Yeah. Nice. Well, they played yeah. Download last year. Yeah. This year. <laughs> I know, yeah. But it's, but it's, but this is a headlining slot, and I've been banging on about them. They should have headlined Download for a long time yeah. now. Yeah, I agree. Even seeing them on the second stage this year, they put on a, a headline set on the second stage. They could have easily just moved that to the main stage, and it would have been even more impressive. Yeah. Because the Hellfest set was absolutely unreal. Wow. With their head. I've, I've seen them. Oh, sorry. But they headlining. They did headline Hellfest, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. and it was fucking yeah. unbelievable. But yeah, I've seen them once, and they were the support band um, uh, of all things. And it was for the All Hope Is Gone tour. They were supporting. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, nice. Um, but straight art. They were on after um, Children of Children of Bodom. Wow, Children of Bodom. So that's not Machine Head and Slipknot. That's a decent yeah. gig, man. Yeah, that's not a name you hear. Yeah, very well, often, uh, yeah that was awesome. Either. No. Children of Bodom. Sorry. Well, yeah, they on. don't make music anymore, do they? <laughs> do they not? No, I don't know. A, but yeah, <laughs> I'm I, I, I not just, a fan. But um, yeah, I, I just I need to see him as a, like a proper yeah. headline. No, I think that that lineup's else. irresistible. And Trivium, Machine Head, and absolutely. Gojira. That is that is like that's wowzer territory. That that's is. an awesome headliner. Yeah, that is like holy shit. Okay, everyone needs to go. Yeah. That's why on on the thirtieth, I'm just banging on those. Uh, those tickets, I'm straight on there. Get my on the payment scheme. I'm like, yes, mate, right on it. Can't wait. Yeah, that's when the that's oh, when it's sorry. released, isn't it? Only a certain amount of tickets. Uh, will this yeah, be out by the thirtieth? It'll be Friday, won't it? This won't yeah. be out by the thir- thirty. No, it won't. It's no, no, it'll be out today. after the thirtieth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've yeah. probably missed them if you look. If you're looking to get uh, <laughs> installment tickets for Bloodstock, you've probably missed them. Though, I reckon already sold out. I reckon they're going to sell out way too quickly. Stu, did you say you've got it already? No, um, I'm going to. I'm going to do and just pay off the okay. full wax straight away. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah. We haven't got wrestling at Bloodstock though. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe you should get. Well, we don't have wrestling at Download anymore. I well, know that's a good point. Um, uh, I I was trying to get a segue back to wrestling again, but I failed miserably with that one. Um, so <laughs> wrestling, um, you, well, you've just said you you've been to download a few times. You haven't been for a long time, but you have been to mm. some wrestling things. In fact, you've just come back from All In. Is that what it's that's called? right? Yeah, Excellent. Wembley Stadium. Yeah, was that's it? it. Yeah, a, um, it was good. It was good. Uh, I wouldn't say it was as good as last year. Um, there are a hell of a lot of empty seats compared to last really? year. But um, yeah, by all accounts, then you sold about 30,000 tickets. Yeah, I mean, that's still pretty good, but yeah. Exactly, did, did exactly. Pay for, but um, I think it was just... pay for tickets? Ca- oh. We did, yeah. Unfortunately, we wondering, haven't got to that. Uh, well, if, if it's that quiet, I'm wondering if it if be, might be worth applying uh, for like accreditation like we get for download. I never knew that was a thing. Now I'm all over that. I'm 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 an elitist who who just doesn't want to pay for anything now. So I'm telling you, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know if they they might not even do that kind of thing. But um, might be worth it. Oh, oh they okay. do, they do. Yeah, I, I I have been banging on at them for ages. The same as WWE, TNA, because they're starting to do more yeah. shows. Um, they're on the comeback. Uh, AEW as well. GCW come over here. 
every so often. Uh, Pro Rev as well. Um, I'm just trying to get that, you know, that first little foot yeah, in yeah. the door to be able to kind of do, you know, this sort of thing. Um, but it's it's so hard getting that first foot yeah. in the door, and, and we're <clears> two <throat> year two years into doing what we're doing, and still mm. trying to plug away at getting that little yeah. foot in. Yeah, first. but once you get your foot in, you can say, "Well, I've been to this," and then they'll go, "Oh, okay, then come to that." Yeah. and then you you know you start getting in everywhere, so it, it'll come. It'll happen. Yeah, it'll yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but sorry, I interrupted you. That's then. all good. So good. Um, yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, uh, I will be honest. The first couple of matches were were a struggle. Um, the opening match, fantastic for anyone that hasn't watched it. Um, it that first match is well worth a go. Um, but I think the main event was fantastic. The casino gauntlet mm. match, which was basically it's like a Royal Rumble, but without being thrown over the top rope, um, it's won by a pin or submission. And yeah, you just get a bunch of guys coming in every 60 <laughs> seconds. Um, we, we got to see some proper old school legends there as well. Sting made an appearance nice. again, um, which he, even in his 60s, I'll give that man his credit, man. Oh, he still yeah, looks great. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, Jeff Jarrett was oh. there as well. Um, he, even he took part in the gauntlet match, uh, and the guys. Oh jacked. yeah, he's for, for his age. I, I saw the interview with him after. That man is a. He was wearing his proper yeah. old school, like ninety nine era shorts as well. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, badass man. The the the, the slap nuts yeah, era. I was like, that's <laughs> sick. But yeah, he he looks great. Um, yeah, and he was and he was still keeping up with the, you know these the young guys that were in the ring. It was just yeah, fantastic to watch. Um, uh, main event fantastic um, can't fault that no um, I haven't wa- I know the results but I haven't strict, watched no. it yet but the results always oh, get ruined it's... for me because I've got so much wrestling stuff on my Facebook and Instagram I can't after an event I can't go on for like 24 hours normally for like Wrestlemania or something I say to Vicky don't don't go on your phone in front of me. Don't tell me anything. I can't go on my phone for the next twenty four hours. Yeah. I have to get home and from work and watch it because otherwise it will all be spoiled for me. I managed to dodge night two of WrestleMania on social media for oh. five days before I actually got what? the chance to watch it. Yeah, and doing a wrestling podcast that's really hard to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow, that's an achievement. But um, yeah. It, it's, uh, I think yeah, we got a bit of a bit of an upgrade um, for our seats. Uh, it, just due to the fact that obviously the the stadium hadn't sold out, they pretty much tried to condense nice. everyone down. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's not a knock on AEW. It makes perfect sense because um, it's being recorded uh, live TV, and also there'll be obviously Blu-ray and DVD distribution. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to be looking at a live event at Wembley Stadium. Where a quarter of the stadium's not even full. No, true. You know what the WWE fans will say though? Oh, couldn't sell out Wembley, could you? That's what they'll be saying. You know they will. <laughs> Two years on the trot, not going to happen. <laughs> oh, didn't we tell you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're, I believe they're. Well, not believe it's true. They're they're taking a break from All In uh, at Wembley next year, and it's going back to Texas. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. But they have announced that Forbidden Door is coming to the UK. That will be but good. But they haven't said where. It's only London so far. Uh, yeah, yeah, it depends where it is. But it, with Forbidden Door, you get to see people you wouldn't normally see. So that will be worth going Absolutely. to. Absolutely. That'll be worth going to anyway, because you fucking never know who can pop up at one of those shows. Uh, totally. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, ugh, I love the New Japan stuff. Oh. It's, um, I, can, I can thank James um, for that more than anything else, because t- technically, his he's kind of pretty much responsible for bringing me back into the wrestling kind of scene. Oh, okay. Um, I spent years away from it, loved it as a kid. Um, and of all people, um, he started sending me these videos of some guy called Bray Wyatt, <laughs> uh, from his NXT days. Said, You're going to love this. It's weird as fuck. I, th- yeah. I thought of you straight away. Yeah. Oh, thanks mate. <laughs> it's true. Actually his like gimmick was very, Attitude era esque, so mm. it probably drew in a lot of the p- uh, people that loved that era of wrestling because they're like, this guy's doing all this weird sort of fucking kooky shit that no one's really doing. Yeah, uh, it's the the comparison that I've always given it. Um, uh, James and Johnny both agree as well. Is Max Cady, oh uh, yeah, Robert De Niro's character from Cape Fear. Yeah, love that Just film. 
Oh, same here. It's one of the few remakes that's better than the original. <laughs> I've never seen the original, actually. Was that, is it like 50s or something? 50s? 60s? Uh, I think it was late 50s. Yeah, never seen, never seen that. I showed it to Vicky great. and she was like, this film is genu- genuinely terrifying. I was like, that's because he's so oh, it's good nightmare at acting. Fuel. Yeah, it really is. Have you Absolute seen that ad? Pure fun. No? No. Have you seen Cape Fear? You need to watch it. No. To, to, to... <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Great film, that is. Uh, so I have a few questions. Um, being the host, uh, I guess, and, and, and I've obviously already admitted that I, I'm not really a fan. So I think I'm allowed to ask a few stupid questions, or they might be deemed as stupid <laughs> questions. Uh, but I, but I think that's a good thing because we probably have some listeners that have that their knowledge of wrestling is about the same as mine as well. Anyway, um, so AEW is not anything to do with WWE. No, it's too different. No, not at all. Okay, no, a separate company. Right. Uh, so let's go back a little bit. WCW, I know, was taken over by WWE. ECW yep. at the time was that taken over by WWE? Yeah, that was also um, acquired. Okay. Well, what's NXT? that we've had a download before. Is that something else completely N- yeah, different? Yeah, NX- NXT is partly to do with um, WWE. It was, uh, it was originally the OV, OVW. Yeah, it's like um, a developmental was, brand for the company. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was there, like, yeah, like you said, developmental and performance centre. Um, okay. But these, these, are the, these are the men and women that basically come up and once they've hit a certain point, they get brought up to the main roster. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, so what, What's Forbidden Door? What is that something to do with AEW? Is that it, nothing to do it's with AEW? It is, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's basically AEW working with outside promotions like New Japan okay. Pro Wrestling, um, and, and basically just getting in, like you said earlier, uh, people you'd never imagined or right. never thought you'd get to see, or some people you'd never even heard of. Okay, um, nothing to do with just, Monsters Inc. Yeah, then. Okay. No. Sadly not. <laughs> That's where my mind went. <laughs> oh my god! Although, I don't think I've Will, ever Will, thought of that. Will Osprey versus Sully would be a hell of a match. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm up to up to speed now. I donn't want to didn't want to interrupt. But uh, well, I, I just have one more question about um, going on. all in quickly. <laughs> <clears throat> what was the ricochet reaction like in the stadium? Um, I'm I'm going to quote exactly what James said after we came out of the Wembley Arena, which was I fucking knew everyone would mark out when ricochet turned <laughs> up. <laughs> okay, okay, I just I want to know because from the footage, it didn't seem like that many people were. But... Oh, the crowd! He had a good reaction. He genuinely yeah. had a really really good reaction. He had yeah. a, a lot better reaction than Mercedes Monet did. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised. That is the most amount of people I've been in a building with, and the quietest I've ever heard it as well. Oh no! To the point you could hear tapping on phones, you could hear people's <laughs> conversation. There was just nothing, oh nothing at all. Okay, that's bad, <laughs> but funny at the same time. I have no know. idea what you're talking about. Still, <laughs> sorry. What's Ricochet? What's Ricochet? <laughs> Uh, Rick Shames, a wrestler that used to be with WWE, um, but left. Um, and once his 30 day no performance, uh, sorry, 90 day no performance clause is up, he's free to go and work elsewhere. Okay. And he popped up at All In, and the crowd reaction was people just going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like in football when someone goes and plays for another team, and people are like, what the fuck? Right. Why? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That sort of that sort of reaction when people go between companies because they're all so tight knitted between the two and they don't like people going over. So yeah, yeah it's a whole thing. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, if you're, let's not, get a back to if you're music. not a wrestling fan, you you won't get it when when you have a a, li- a literal freak out reaction when you see someone on another show that's not supposed to be there. It's it's one of the weirdest things you'll ever feel. Uh, but if you're not a wrestling fan, you won't understand. Yeah, well, what it's sim- like to feel it. To, yeah. Like Supernatural did a Scooby Doo crossover episode. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of like that, I guess. I've yeah. never yeah, watched yeah. Supernatural. Uh, <laughs> uh, two and a Half Men did a CSI crossover when I used to watch that. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh. Like we're doing now, crossing over. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, yes, cool. Right, <laughs> music in wrestling has been a yes. huge thing for a long time. I've actually got a, uh, a list of um, all the uh, PvP theme tunes and some big names in there. 
Mm. Um, oh yeah. But uh, also, like, I mean, it's it's such a big thing that they even have the bands come and perform the perform these songs live, don't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Seen, yeah. Uh, with, without obviously, I have very little knowledge. But have you seen many? Have you seen that many times, either live or on uh, on the show? Uh, live, no. Um, oh no, sorry, sorry, tell a lie. I've managed to see Fozzie for the last two years. Um, uh, AEW's nice. all in. Um, nice. They were good last year. <clears throat> <clears throat> and now I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, that's the only ones really for me. Um, yeah. Have uh, Have any of your favourite bands done any sort of theme tunes, either for like the pay per views or um, any any wrestlers? And it's just sort of. You didn't weren't expecting it. They just got come out to this new song. And yeah, like um, Faith No More or something. I don't the know. Biggest one that I remember, and I was a bit of a fan of this guy back in the. Uh, oh, just where was he wrestling? Uh, Ring of Honor days um, was CM Punk, who yeah. always used to come out at that point to uh, AFI. Oh, and, nice! And for the life right. of me, I can't remember the name of the song. And it's an album album opening one because he used it. Um, at the Blood and Guts match with MJF um, in AEW, like, not last year, year before, because he catch Shit, I don't know what one it is. Oh, that's going to annoy the hell out of me. But uh, anyway, the, the, point, yeah, the, the point I was getting to was when he, when he first came up to WWE after signing with them, here in Killswitch and Gage, uh, the fire. Oh, yeah. And just going and, Dude, I've got that written oh, down as one of my favourites. Oh, man. I know. Really? I know. It's got to be the most like the most brutal theme tune ever because you never would have thought that like a metalcore band and they were playing like all the heavy bits and yeah, they kept the absolutely. screaming in as well and I yeah. was like oh my god they could have removed mm. all of that you know what they're like uh, it's, yeah massive fan of kill switch engage genuinely would never like you said it's not a band I ever would have imagined someone having as their entrance music um so I Personally, I do believe yeah, there's probably yeah. a lot of influence from CM Punk himself there. Um, being oh, a, being yeah. a big uh, definitely rock, metal, and punk fan for years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's about a great you, Simon? entrance though. When you watch the videos back now, you're like, "Oh, that's so good!" Like, I know obviously they he changed it and it became a probably more of a well-known yeah, yeah. song, but still, like, I love that little phase. Oh, where he had awesome. it. So good. Yeah. What about, what about you, Simon? Because I, I I have no idea how often you actually get to go to any of these live shows. Um, uh, no, I haven't seen yeah. anything live. I would say out of the modern ones, probably one of my favourites, and they did perform it live on NXT, I think, as well, was um, Code Orange doing the Alistair Black Code Orange and Incendiary. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, that was... Woo! That was a great... Cause yeah, I, I'm a big same. Code Orange fan anyway. And then when they, they got Alistair Black, and then I'm like, oh... I'm like, that music sounds sick. Who's that? And they're like, oh, it's Code Orange. I was like, oh, okay, right. I'm on board. And then that became... And um, uh, he did come out to that at oh, NXT nice. at Download. So um, that was one of my that was one of my great memories is seeing Alistair Black in person at Download. Because um, I thought, oh, we'll try and get into the tent. Because you know, yeah, normally yeah. they're really, really full. Yeah. And uh, I was sort of at the back of the queue. But the way the queue went, I actually got a really, really good <laughs> spot of only a row away. <laughs> From the front row. So, um, and I was in there, yeah, and I was screaming like a little girl when Alistair Black came out and he nice. came up to that theme as well. So that is an awesome track as was, well. That was sick. Oh, it's such a good song. I was going to say as well, the um, one of the ones that surprised me at the time, but now it's just such a th- song that everyone knows, is um, Metalingus Alton yeah. Bridge, which was obviously yeah. Edge's um, theme. We, I was, we went to uh, Clash at the Castle with the three of us um, uh, two years ago, and I believe Edge and Alter Bridge retweeted the, his entrance from that pay per view, saying, "This is the loudest we've ever heard that song be sung." And it it was <laughs> shit. Nice. And I've seen Alter Bridge, but this was so loud. But it was brilliant hearing. You yeah. know, I think it was what seventy seventy two thousand. Um, just all in unison, man. It was absolutely brilliant. You look at the numbers on Spotify and you think, I know Alter Bridge are a big band, but wrestling fans must have something oh, to do yeah, with that number absolutely. that Metalingus has got because yeah. it's played so many times by wrestling fans. And they've also like, got, um, you know, it is oh, a classic. I can't remember the name of the song, but the Judgment Day are using one of theirs, uh, one of Alter Bridge's songs as well at the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I can probably find that. That's is. probably on my uh, list of PPV pay per view. Yeah, the Thought Judgment Day. Thing. Yeah, maybe it's not on here. Forget that. <laughs> it might not be on there. But yeah. What was that last Judgment Day? Is it on here? But all sorts. Oh no, yeah, yeah, but it's 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 a group, not a not a pay per view. Oh right, okay, yeah. right, never mind. Then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> another uh, <laughs> another idiotic thing by me, <laughs> just just so the uh, the fans who don't like wrestling don't feel as bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I thought Judgment Day was a pay per view. Anyway, cool. Uh, oh, the one track I wanted to mention to see if you remembered, Stu. Uh, did you ever have the aggression CD? Uh, Would you remember it? But you might you might remember this theme anyway. Do you remember the Run DMC version? Oh, DX theme. Uh, the was that the one that X Pac X Park used in the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The King of Rap. Well, so the bad that it's great. Well, I, I was listening to that earlier, and I was thinking, I was thinking, this I don't care what anyone thinks. Like this is legit a banger. I was literally blaring it earlier, thinking <laughs> I love this song so much, it and I don't know those, why. Oh, it is. It's just really bad but you're like i need to play it loudly yeah, i mean yeah. jo- johnny has his yeah, own yeah, little segment in our podcast called johnny Oki, where he i mean to start with we we started getting people to um suggest old school theme tunes new school theme tunes and how you would like them sung um the i think the most impressive one or the one that reduced me to tears of laughter and nearly fell off James's sofa was he was asked to recite uh, Shawn Michaels' sexy boy theme tune as a Shakespearean bard. Um, <laughs> and it is just for shits and giggles, but it, some of the ones that he's had suggested to him are just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, but it's, it's just... <laughs> Great idea, that oh, is. It kills me every time. They should have more... They should have wrestling themes at karaoke bars because some of them are so... They would be so great to sing. As, if someone said to me, we've got the Shawn Michaels theme, <laughs> theme song, right? Karaoke. That would be the one I would pick yeah. out of all of them because I would just sing that. till that, that or the Hulk Hogan theme. I would just... I'd be belting both I, of those out full I'm blast. I'm so sorry. You know I, I mean? can't stand that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's got to be one it of the greatest is, themes it's songs annoying, of all time. But like. yes, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, Hulk Hogan, (laughs) you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, as a person, a complete... Oh, just where where Uh, to start with the shit that that guy's done in wrestling. But but, (laughs) but as an icon and as, you know, he, you know, I don't think wrestling would be where it is today. Use that term loosely, actor. Actor. (laughs) 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 Have you seen Suburban Annoyingly many years ago, yes, but (laughs) James and Johnny are adamant we're going to have a sit-down watch-along, and I absolutely detest that film. It's terror. (laughs) You guys should definitely be forced to watch wrestling movies just constantly. Yeah, because they had their own movie... Film, yeah, didn't they? I think the the first yeah, one. Yeah, the studio. Yeah, yeah. doing yeah. whole films. The first one I saw of that was the Battle Royale one with Stone Cold in. Did that have Hulk Hogan in as well? Yeah, that's oh, the Condemned. One. Con- condemned. That's not bad. That's that actually a, that's a whole decent film. Incredible. Though. That was yeah, such a good it's, film. It's legitimately, a really good film. Oh, yeah, Jones. Of yeah. It is. yeah, yeah, I have seen that. That's yeah, not bad. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, uh, I, I I've got that. I've got that on DVD. I I genuinely think that's actually one of the better. Movies that they didn't produced, mind, definitely. Didn't mind see no evil. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, the Kane one. Oh god, there was a big show one. Um, you know, what? you guys should be forced to watch. You should have to watch the Marine oh, one, two, three, no. four. Oh god. <laughs> sure, I'm part. I'm, I'm partly happy now that Johnny's oh um, internet is playing up because he'd be just like, yeah, this is a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, we'll we'd be that. writing this all down, Let's making piss you do it. You off. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Marine oh, one, two, three, four? It was <laughs> yeah, <just> produced <laughs> films. So I think like jo- it was John Cena. John Cena's um, in like the first the rest of the two, Miz. and then it's like the Miz, and then did Randy someone Orton else? I think I can't remember. There's someone else. Randy, was Randy Orton right? in one of them? It might yeah. have been Randy Orton. Yeah, it could have been actually. Yeah. So yeah, just terrible oh, so wrestling bad. movies, okay. but pr- produced movies. So you know, but yeah. Yeah, Stu. Yeah, um, Patreon idea for you. Set, set up a Patreon if you want one. We haven't. 
and then have watch alongs with all the movies. Oh, and... <laughs> as a pain, as much of a painful thought as that is, that <laughs> may, may not actually be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> we will accredit you both for it. Uh, that way, we're giving other people <laughs> excellent. Yeah, we're giving other people ideas. We're not going to watch it, but we're going to force Thanks you so to much. watch it. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> we just have ten percent of your Patreon. That's right. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take a cut of the money, dread. Each <laughs> dread. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, right. I, I, I'm way off track now. I completely forgot on exact everything we were going to talk about. Um, Simon, did you have anything else written down? Um, I was going to say um, I was, another question for you. Obviously, we're mm. talking about music and about wrestling, and I, I was explaining to. Adam before the podcast who Jim Johnston yeah. was because he didn't know and um what what are what are your what's your favorite Jim Johnston theme or what oh. from that sort of era what what themes because we were talking about we were also talking about Stone Cold Steam and then we were talking about the yep. disturbed version of Stone Cold Steam that came out a little bit yeah. after which is fair yeah, it's pretty good it's not as good as the original but it's still pretty good so for anybody who is also unaware like I was 10 minutes ago or whatever however long it was <laughs> Before they started having all these other bands come in and do songs for entrances, there was um the the, the guy that you just I've forgotten his name already. That guy, Jim Johnson. <laughs> Jim Johnson. He wrote pretty much everything, all the music for wrestling, apparently. Yeah. Um, for like thirty yeah, yeah, yeah. years, I think. I think uh, Jimmy that. Jimmy so, Hart yeah, had been playing it as well. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Hart. He's like a co-writer, and he wrote loads of the yeah, early tracks right. as well, didn't he? Like. Golden era trap. I only like know that because Johnny told me that a few weeks back. <laughs> yeah, I had no really? idea. <laughs> I should go downstairs now and whip my um, anthology out because I've still got it on CD downstairs. I think I've got it somewhere, actually. I don't have it. I was like, when that came out, I was like, are you kidding me? Four CDs with like every so wrestling good. theme on it that come out for the last 30 years. I was like, straight away. As soon as that thing came out, I was like, I am <laughs> buying that. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it's fucking unreal. Um, fa- so, do you have a favourite one? No, oh, sorry. Um, a bit of a, a bit of an obscure one, but I do like the Undertaker's Ministry um, theme. Oh, yes. It's a bit. I, I love the Undertaker's theme anyway, but the the Ministry theme just took it somewhere completely different. Um, it, it just added a whole new level to it. Um, yeah, that's. That's my favourite phase of Undertaker in general. Yeah, I absolutely... When he was like... When they literally made him look like a devil worshipper and they gave him yeah. a little devil beard and like... That was so... I loved... And his his outfits were like even better they, yeah, than they, they were before. I think like, it was when I they tried to make him look phase. like a dark druid. Um, it was... Uh, yeah. Yeah. As appearances go, that's definitely my favourite era for him. Oh, 100%. I'm with you on that one. Love that stage. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, definitely my favourite theme from that era, absolutely. I'll tell you what one it is like. Uh, back in the day, I didn't rate it that much, but listening to it now as being much older, you know, musician and all that sort of stuff. Gold Dust theme oh, is yeah. fucking great. Yeah, he was at a, um, All In as well, Dusty Rhodes. Um, oh, again, yeah. that was a, 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 I've got to see both the uh, Rhodes brothers now, so that's, that's, that's one off the bucket list. Uh, oh. But Dusty, that's Dustin awesome. was just brilliant, but Gold Dust themes, it was just, yeah, it's, it's so dramatic. Yeah, it sounds like, do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, um, it's like Jim Johnson was watching like um, the 80s Kung Fu movies. Yeah. If you put that over like a Van Damme film, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice. You literally yeah, would not notice. Literally, it would just it would just fit perfect. I think like blood sport in my head whenever I listen to that theme. But yeah, and no, I fucking oh, love that one. Yeah, good it's pick. Just a, it's just a cheeky little one, isn't it? From yeah, that era. yeah. I think you just definitely topped my one. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to top that one. But go back, go back and listen to it again because it's a it is, banger. Yeah. It's a banger. Adam, what was what's your favourite from the from any any era? From any era. Now, come on, you you you've watched wrestling before. I was have. there any when you were watching wrestling? Was there anyone that came out and you went, "This is getting me hyped"? <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously, you said Stone. I mean, obviously, when Stone Cold came out, everyone flips out. Standard yeah, procedure. Yeah. Um. Not. Not that I can think of. So. Um. Well, I think not that I can think of. 
The only one that really stood out to me was Triple H's, which uh, Mo had Mo has a game. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a great song. So I, know, I know Survivor have done some, but I wasn't watching it at that point, so it would be cheating for me to say, uh, Dave Batista, I Walk Alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, it's great. <laughs> I read that earlier. <laughs> it's it's what well. you said a minute ago, Stu. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that is such a good song. So it's such Dude, a good song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think with the with the Triple H one, the Motorhead one, I think people listen to that now on Spotify, and they don't even know it's a wrestling theme. It just sounds like a yeah. Motorhead track. Yeah, I think people listen go, "This is a banger." But some people that have never paid any attention to wrestling whatsoever, especially like Motorhead fans, they probably have absolutely no idea that it was a wrestling I think that theme. Was smart. That's no. smart. Well, I was just going to say it was a it was a Motorhead track, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, no, it was written, written specifically for Triple H's for... entrance music. For, for, okay. For yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. That, cool. <laughs> that was my uh, also oh, my um, my little my little boy's first introduction to uh, Motorhead. Oh, he's, oh, he's getting quite big Banging. into his wrestling at the moment, but um, he he does love his music as well. Bless him. And uh, yeah, he he knows who Motorhead is now after watching that. Good. Well, if you if you're a Motorhead fan, you'll bloody love Bloodstock because there's oh, so much. No. Motorhead esque stuff. I mean, the, right, the, yeah. even the beer. You know, you go to Lemmy's bar and you drink Motorhead fucking beer. It's like, yeah, I'm sold. Everything is Motorhead for some reason at Bloodstock. They, yeah, exactly. They, You're already gonna love it. Yeah, they had the um, plane that Motorhead used to have on stage at the entrance of the walking. Yeah, the bomber. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I did, did hear yeah. obviously about the um, and, yeah. his ashes and the is it bronze bust. Um, I, I, yeah. just, I had no idea about that until mate of mine started sending me all the photos and just looking at it going, oh, mate, why have I not gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're probably... I it, It's moving all around the world, but I wouldn't be surprised if they still have the bust in the museum yeah. there next year, so you could probably get a real close yeah, look yeah, at it, yeah. I would have thought. Did, was there specifically a Lemmy Museum last year? Did they have it this year as well? They Am always have Motorhead stuff at Bloodstock, okay. but they, they've got loads of other stuff in there as well, right. but they always have a little bit dedicated to him. Yeah, cool. Right. Uh, I had another question, actually. Um, similar to I was talking about Saliva, I got into Saliva from a PlayStation 2 game, which was um, MX2003, a motocross game. Back at that point, there were rock songs in so many games. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I, and I know it's the same with some of the wrestling games. I know Saliva was like the main theme tune for one of the wrestling games. Uh, are there any bands that you can think of that you got into from playing the games, or or from hearing the theme tune? Uh, you'd never heard of the band before, but you saw somebody come out to it, uh, and you're like, I could get into that band. Games, yes, Rise Against. Um, I think it was Need for Speed Underground. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, nice. Need for, nah, Need for Speed Most Wanted. Sorry. Right. Um, and li- cool. literally all the SSX games, uh, the snowboarding. Games. Yes, <laughs> but, I mean that was that was literally like who's who of every genre of music you could imagine. Um, yeah, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as well. Um, yeah, just... so much so that there's a there's a band that covers just those songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine hundred. Was it downloaded this year? Or was it last year? They were at download. Uh, I think. I'm... I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Can't but, remember. Um, oh god, are you? I'm... What about wrestling games? Is there anything anybody from wrestling games you can think yeah, of? Yeah, um, I I was kind of I still listen to them now. I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan of them that much anymore, but I do still listen to them. Was Three Days Grace? I think they've they, yeah. they've appeared quite a few times on um, some of the older uh, SmackDown versus Raw games. Um, I think it was also my first. No, that was uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted as well. That's my first in- introduction to uh, Bullet for My Valentine. Oh, who nice. I eventually eventually grew to like. Um, I wasn't a massive fan first, you know, uh, upon first listening. But the more and more you hear, sort of hear it on the game, it was like, actually, you know, this, what's, what's this song called? Hand of Blood. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's a shame. That's, that's not that's bad. That's not bad. I think like, properly got into it about five or six years later. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Simon? Any? Um, I, I think we've probably gone over this a couple of times over the years. I, the the one that I remember the most sticking in my head is I there was a PS one game called Sled Storm, which was like a yeah snow sledding. 
but instead of snowboarding, it was snow sledding. And they had um, Rob Zombie Dragula on the theme. Yeah. On the theme, it was a remix version of it, but it still it was still good. And I was like, "This is." Me and my brother were like, "What on earth is this? This is amazing!" And then obviously figured out what it was, and then yeah, instantly went and I've still got the single downstairs of uh, Rob Zombie Dragula that I bought at the oh, time. So nice. It's pretty pretty fucking insane that I was like, wow. It was like a, the game had just come out and then the song was on it. And then but the single was out. Oh. So how did they have the how did they have the remix version of the song? But then the single was I don't understand how it how it happened. But yeah, wow. I went and bought the C D. So I know, yeah. It's pretty insane. And then I heard it on the um in the Matrix film, and then I was like, Oh, yeah. So and then Edge. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I think everyone everyone forgets that. There's been so many um so many people sometimes have used like people a lot of people forget about the kill switch engage CM Punk yeah, thing yeah, yeah. because they go to new themes and everyone sort of just forgets about the I feel like that's like with everyone remembers Randy Orton's new theme but doesn't remember Randy Orton's old theme. Sure, I I did so, see with um an interview recently. Um it is an old interview, but he absolutely hated that first one. He really, really? did not like that theme. Oh, that's a great oh, that's, song, I think though. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But he was yeah. like, I just, I just don't yeah. get it how that works with my gimmick. I'm really sorry. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, just, it's not working for me. Okay. Well, uh, well, the new one's good as well. But yeah, I do like the yeah. old one. I have no idea. <laughs> Still, <laughs> um, <laughs> I do not know any of these. Um, I have anyway, no uh, so, idea. Uh, like I was saying earlier, like there have been some absolutely huge songs. Um, in some of the uh, I mean, people have had the most theme tunes. I had my own theme tune actually once. Um, it was quite cool. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's that's another <laughs> another. No, wait, oh no, what? you're gonna have to what? explain that now. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've said it before, but, um, but the cobblestones, the pub near where we uh, in Bridgewater used to you used to be able to get onto the jukebox with an app on your phone. So when I was about thirty seconds away, I would put. Backstreet Boys, I want it that way on the jukebox, and then pay extra to have it play next. So I walk into the pub while it's on, and and that was my that was oh, my theme tune. Sake. That's actually like a theme song as yeah. well. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's at one point because because a lot of a lot of my friends knew that I loved that song, and one of them was in there once, and and she was like, "Do you know what song it is? This is like so weird that you're walking into this." And I was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> <laughs> I did this. <laughs> That's a wild idea for a pub, though, that you can just on your phone just put music. Yeah, on. I've, yeah. Heard, I've never heard that before. No. That's yeah, an awesome idea. I mean, I've seen jukeboxes and stuff, it, it, but that's that's crazy. It, well, was a good idea, but um, one of the guys I used to know <laughs> didn't didn't like the landlord, so he just sit at home putting lost profits on his on the jukebox. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is amazing! Wait, bravo, man! That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to put that in. That's incredible. Can we? Okay, you sure you reckon you can put that, that in? Oh, That's, absolutely! What's offensive about it? It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Reset. fine with that. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry. As I was saying, yeah, some of these, um, some of these PB, PPV. Uh, that's weird to say. Pay per view. Um. <laughs> Uh, PBV sounds really PPV, sexual, yeah. like it's saying it's like a section on porn. <laughs> that's that's yeah. what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> yeah, some of these have had massive things. I, I just want to sort of scroll through a few of them and just uh, just name a few. Uh, not, I'm not going to spend too long on this, but um, I mean, asking Alexandria um, for NXT, the great, the great American Bash, yep. Metallica for NXT Takeover. Um, ACDC for WWE Survivor, Corey Taylor, Bring Me the Horizon, just absolutely massive bands. Oh, um, yeah. And then you've got people like Poppy. Is Poppy... No, it's Puppy, the one you like, isn't it? Or is it Poppy, Simon? Poppy. Yeah, I don't like Poppy. I like Puppy. Poppy. But yeah, I mean, there's some Sam Ryder. So um, if you can get into one of these, then, uh, you know, it might end up actually pushing your name a bit further than... Mm. Uh, than you originally oh yeah, had. the outreach, the outreach is absolutely huge. And once WWE get on Netflix, it will go tenfold. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I I, they were like, doing that. I feel I do Brilliant feel really, decision. really sorry for AEW once that deal hits. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, it, especially, it could, I mean... could be the end it, of them, I think. It's also going to benefit TNA because they're starting to, you know, um, collaborate a lot with WWE at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched any... Sorry, just quickly, sorry. You just mentioned TNA. I haven't watched any TNA shows, but I've been watching all of the, like, catch-ups on YouTube, and it looks great. Is, yeah, absolutely brilliant at the moment. Fantastic. They've made a great character. M- Mustafa Ali, wow. Yeah. What they've done with him is... He's, I mean, he was always a great wrestler, but he never really had a. They never got the gimmick a personality. right. You know, he was good, but yeah, but like fucking hell, now he's unbelievable. Yeah, he's fantastic. He was, he he deserved so so much more and so much better. Um, especially yeah. on his last run, he was given this amazing big build up, and then it just yeah. fell flat. Yeah, such a shame. Good wrestler though. Oh, great wrestler. Superb. Was it? Uh, what was that opening match at one of the WrestleManias, the recent ones? Him, Seth Rollins, and The Miz? Yes. That was a fucking great opener, that was. That insane. Was. Absolutely yeah, insane. That was, I will always remember that. Yeah, that was yeah. a great one. It was like a, an entire match filled with Shelton Benjamin moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Ad. We just, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm glad you're here because, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise it'd just be asking you mm, what are the ropes on the wrestling ring made ropes? of what are the, what are the... <laughs> it'd just be all these fucking random questions <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever comes into my head what's been your favourite match where somebody comes out from under the ring <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> very very specific things <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do, you, do you have one? I, I assume that's going to be too broad a question. That's why I said it. <laughs> uh, uh, that is a very niche match question. That's great. That's the thing. Oh, John. yeah. I've got one that has that does spring to mind, but technically it's not out from under the ring. It's kind of risen up from the, the Don't stage clown. floor. He did that once, didn't he? Oh, he might have or, done, actually. or was that his thing? Did he always come from under the ring? I can't remember. Oh, that was, that was the second doink. Okay. Yeah, there was two of them, and then they brought. Was Dink. I had no idea. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, were... It was different people playing him at different times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, well, should we start to wrap it up there? Should we? Um, should we? I mean, we've been recording for quite a bit now. I don't know how long your episodes are normally, Stu. As you would know, we are ours are quite long, so uh, we are yeah, quite comfortable. We're talking for ages, uh, and and I'm more comfortable without having to rush things along. But. Um, Oh, we'll just bang on for fucking ever. We will. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, same, you, yeah, you had some uh, famous matches or some of your favourite matches, didn't you, Simon? Okay, it? yeah. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Stu uh, some of my favourite matches um, of all time from WWE. And uh, Stu is going to give me what his rating of the match would be. And then we're going to see what Dave Meltzer... <laughs> Uh, thought of the match so if you don't know who Dave Meltzer is he's um he's like a famous um how would you put it I'm him? really biting my tongue here like a critic <laughs> is he a critic or... he is like a, he is he's a wrestling critic but he's yeah, been writing he's journalist for, for the, we're wrestling uh, for like wrestling and observer 50 years yeah yeah wrestling observer and it's not all about him but it is people do sometimes aim their whole careers at getting a five star match review from Dave yeah. Meltzer. Maybe. So um, oh, you said before recording yeah. that a Michelin stars of wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, he's like the Pierre Marco White of of, of wrestling. <laughs> he, he gives you the stars. <laughs> See, this is why James and Johnny should have been here as well. Uh, they, I feel like the idiot that's stuck between. Google and Wikipedia, just these two know. So, I mean, Johnny's input and actually having been in the industry himself is unreal. But then yeah. you've got James, who is literally the the guy is a walking encyclopedia. Nice. Yeah. So I, yeah I'm, 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 those guys I'm gutted they're not here because I know those two <laughs> would have got it straight away. Uh, yeah. Well. Um, but yeah, but it's, I, I want to get your rating of these matches as well because some of these might be some of your favourites, but these are some of mine. Some of them are a bit random, but they're just yeah. matches that I and matches that I always rewatch. And don't worry, um, you can do even it. Adam might know a couple of don't, couple of these. Yeah, and don't worry, you can do it the other way round after if you want. Just say some of your favourite <laughs> matches back at Simon and yeah, we'll Google we'll it over here and see what Dave Meltzer <laughs> said. Uh, the first one, 
being one of my favorite matches, probably one of the first ones I remember, like I lived about, you could see Wembley Arch from where I grew up, basically. Mm-hmm. That's how close I was. So British Bulldog versus Bret Hart, SummerSlam 92 at Wembley is like one of my favorite matches. Even now you watch it, you're like, whoa, that is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, is yeah. that is that a match that you rate highly or that you have enjoyed watching or have you not watched it for ages? I, enjoy, I do enjoy watching it. I do enjoy yeah. watching it. Um, I think yeah. was... that whole pay per view, to be fair, is pretty good actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think the last time I properly watched it would have been, I think, about a week before we went to uh, AEW All In last year, because obviously oh, this nice. was, this was the first big wrestling event since then at Wembley. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. I think it was just after the three of us were getting together and talking about it, and then we watched a few little clips here and there, and then yeah. went back on to. Um, WWE's network and went back and rewatched the whole thing. Um, yeah. But it was, I, I, I do enjoy it because it was nice to have an intercontinental title match that was a, yeah. a main event. Yeah, that's true, actually. I never, I never even thought about that. And the fact yeah. that apparently British Dog was absolutely dropped off, off of his nuts. tits. Yeah. And he was uh, hired Brett Hart had to call the entire match, didn't he? Just from nothing. Yeah. Literally. And it still turned it out to be. Fantastic! Yeah, really good. Mind boggling for, for someone who was absolutely drugged up to the eyeballs and having somebody walk yeah. him through step by step every single move yeah. that he had to do. He's still, you know, they both managed to make it work. Well, let's just say this isn't the only Bret Hart match in my list uh, because he is a god of wrestling. Ah, okay, right. Okay, I see where this is going now. <laughs> uh, so, what what would you have given that match? Do you think out of five? Uh, me. Um, me personally, I'd, I'd give that a, uh, four out of five. Okay, and what do you think our mate Dave gave Three it? Three point five. You bang on, mate. He gave it a really? four out of five. <laughs> yeah. oh. So that's actually really good. I can't believe you actually got that one, which is wow, which is great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you should get a job for Wrestling Observer. Fucking. <laughs> Uh, another one of my favourites, another old school one, they go up further towards sort of now, uh, is Razor Ramon Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 10, the ladder match. Ah, okay. Um, um, which, at the time, I, you know, there wasn't ladder matches at this point. So I know they'd mm-hmm. done them on like some house shows and stuff, but to see that at the time, I was absolutely blown away by like what the fuck are these guys doing jumping off of this ladder like what Still is happening an awesome right match now? as well it's great yeah it, it hasn't aged a day no that match. um yeah i think that's that's just from memory i think that's the first time i ever saw like a heavyweight with razor ramon against someone of of not the same stature and then they yeah. threw in a ladder for it as well I'm like okay yeah all right right yeah. i like okay. where this is going okay it's going to even the stakes out. <laughs> yeah, but um, I love that match. Yeah, that is an awesome match. Uh, what would I what, give it? What would you give it? I'd give that a 4.5. A 4.5? Yeah. Okay, what do you think Dave gave Three. it? Believe it or not, he gave the match five stars. Wow. It's one of his five-star matches. And at that time, going into the sort of new gen era yeah, yeah. not many matches around that time were getting five stars but oh, obviously right. because it was so different i'm guessing for anything that happened at the time he banged five stars on that wow that doesn't surprise me wow i know it's pretty uh it's pretty pretty random actually jesus christ adam do you want to pine in here with anything mm, any questions yeah. or mm. he's just <laughs> he's just you guys can't see this right but he's just sitting there like a little puppy just like just waiting <laughs> to see what we do. Because he has no fucking idea what we're talking no. about. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. But I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I've said at the beginning, I am not a fan of wrestling, but I'm not a fucking gatekeeper. I'm not one of these people who, who will have a go at people for liking wrestling. I'm like, oh, it's for kids or, uh, you know, it's not real. I'm not one of those people. So I appreciate it and I'm listening and I'm learning and I'm I'm enjoying it. But I just don't have much input at the, at the moment either. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Okay, um, another one. Another. It's not really random, but I think it's a great match, 
and it had probably one of the biggest entrances of a new character of all time. Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker, Bad Blood 97, with the introduction Kane. of Kane for the first time at the end. Oh. It was in a Hell in the Cell. It was first the first ever Hell one, in the Cell. yeah. Um... First ever one, yeah. One, yeah, I mean, like... You watched it. You were saying earlier about chair shots. Oh, oh. yeah, I know. I've... Some of the chair shots in this match are awful. You watch it and you're like, "Oh my god, this poor guy's yeah. brain." I'm surprised they're both not pretty banged up. Well, Shawn Michaels is pretty banged up from it. I know Undertaker can barely walk now. So, uh, so I don't. James straight away would he'd be all over this? As, I mean, even he said, <laughs> so it's, "You can't beat the first one. First one's the best one." For for yeah, as, an, it is, as an actual it's, match itself, the first one is the best. I will agree with you on that. But I love the second one yeah. more. What was Mankind, the second one? Mankind, uh, and Undertaker. Oh God! Of course. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Obviously, um, yeah. that's what it considers to be one of the that, greatest wrestling matches ever. Uh, when he threw him off the cell as well. Yeah. Like only, yeah. Only yes. The second See? ever cage match. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Hell yeah. In the cell. Pretty hell. Or the hell? Yeah. Hell in the cell. Yeah. yeah. I remember what not this match, but that I remember him chucking him off, and I was in my friend's room in his room at his house, and obviously it was like three in the morning, and we all just stood up like, "What the yeah. fuck just is it first, Your first he's reaction is dead, Jesus, he's, he's not him. moving. Um, yeah, Sh- yeah, that still. Yeah. Oof. See, I like that match for those that that and the fact that it's such a legendary yeah. and like. It's always going to be remembered, but I do agree that I think that this one is a better yeah, wrestling absolutely. match. Absolutely, and like you said, it's, than it's the introduction was. to Kane. Um, I, oh, when Kane just comes just and rips the door off, jolts that door off, you're just like, yeah. "Holy shit!" And, I, that's and that's still scary, I think the best man. version of Kane. Oh yeah, original. Um, yeah, I. What you don't like? Uh, voice Never box. Two Never words. Happened. Suck it, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like alien resurrection <laughs> never happened <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, i love it no i love it anyway what would you um what would you give that one would you say me personally i'd give that a five yeah a five what do you think dave gave Four. it dave gave it a really? five as well <laughs> Yeah, I just like I thought I'd grab these and surprise yeah, you with some of these. This is what, uh, what shocked yeah, gave, me. He's he never really five stars. a kind of gimmicky fan. I think I've picked examples though that are the right, first right. ones. So he's obviously Ooh. seen it and gone, "Okay, that's a really yeah. fucking good idea, actually," and it worked. Yeah. I'm sure he didn't give like the Triple H and. Uh, Phineas Godwin <laughs> hog pen match fucking five stars but you know <laughs> first of its oh, kind five God. stars Dave come on <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell um, uh, what else have we got on the list we've only got a few more um, one of my favourite matches of all time and a match that I think everyone could agree is probably one of the greatest wrestling matches in history Bret Hart Stone Cold, WrestleMania 13, the classic face and heel switch that is still one of the greatest was switches this, of a face and heel, I think, in was wrestling this the submission match? history. Yes, with Ke- the Ken, Sh- Ken Shamrock right. special the referee. The photo of the blood sh- down the face. It's when, it's when, yeah, it's when they were really trying to turn Bret Hart heel and Austin, yeah. Austin was the heel and Bret Hart was the face. Everybody but by loved the end Austin. of the match... They had yeah. completely switched. <laughs> they had completely switched, which just tells you again how incredible yeah, 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 fucking absolutely. Bret Hart is at just doing anything when it comes um, to wrestling. Um, but yeah, that face down the that blood down the face image is still like so iconic. Fucking, it's horrible though, isn't it? Like you can see because because you can tell it's real blood because when he puts his head up and squeezes, yeah. the blood just starts it's, to run faster down his face. The image that like, I could always oh. remember is as he's literally mouth closed and then screams and you can still see that strand of blood stuck yeah. from his top lip to his bottom lip as you're just looking at it going, oh, that's oh. real. Oh, wow. Okay. It is kind of crazy what these guys yeah. do, you know, what they do just to get over a match. They'll be like, right, I'm... I'm gonna cut the yeah. shit out of my face so I bleed absolutely everywhere to sell how 
how insane this match is. Like, it's pretty fucking wild, isn't it? It's not something you do at work. You don't go, do you know what? I'm really going to sell these emails that I'm writing right Send. now. Hold on. <laughs> so we blade for a second. <laughs> yeah, like, it's fucking crazy that wrestlers actually do this to themselves to, oh, it's, to it's, sell it's a one match. Of... Um, but yeah, it's one of That's my... Right. I was going to say, it's just, it's one Sorry. of those weird concepts where, like you said, you know, if somebody for a job offer was to say, look, to really sell this job, here, hide this little bit of switchblade, hide it in your wrist, and then just get your hairline open. Like, you fucking what? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> It'll will look really good, that, though. All right, much. fine. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, in some instances of wrestling, when they do it and it goes wrong, and it's like that Eddie Guerrero oh, one always too, was... stands out to me. Where he, there, was, there was this match ad where Eddie Guerrero was supposed too to cut deep. himself, but he far went too deep. far too deep. And the blood... I might have and seen it, it was it, it was horrific. It's like... Yeah. It's like watching a real life horror movie with this guy just bleeding absolutely everywhere. Um, <laughs> Jerry Mercury was the worst one I've ever seen. Uh, I believe it was a ladder match with the Hardy and um, John. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that where he kicks the ladder up in his face? Explode, and it is. You, I've oh, never yeah. seen that much blood come out of someone so quick. It was like instant, and his eyes within seconds oh. he could barely open his eyes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not absolutely barbaric to watch. Yeah. Um the the other other one I always remember about someone getting their nose busted is the um it's like early days Triple H Rock, I think SummerSlam ninety eight, their ladder match, when yeah. the rock doesn't get his hands up in time and Triple H kicks the ladder and you just oh, see it hits yeah. the rock like this and his nose just goes <laughs> and you're like, Yeah, <laughs> broken nose instantly. D -d -d just Too you just late. see he goes like that, he's just a little bit too slow John, in the ladder. John just, Cena boop, getting his nose, nose broken during explodes. a kind of promo shoot by Brock Lesnar. I mean, <laughs> genuinely was so bad to look and his at. Nose, his awful. nose was like that, wasn't it? It was so, like so bad. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's a good episode. What? You guys could do a full episode about eight times wrestlers oh. have broken their nose. Oh, there, there is worse. <laughs> there is worse broken bones. Uh, I one that I have seen. Um, I've, I've watched it once and vowed yeah. I'm never looking at that again. That was just horrific. <laughs> um, and it was. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I know what you're going to say. It's not the Sid Vicious leg, is it? Even just talking about it has made my skin crawl. Yeah, I'm. Oh God, I can't even think. Adam, you need to just just Google Sid Vicious broken I leg and just I watch it to. for a second. I really don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I might have seen. I was going to say earlier, I, I might have seen some of these. Uh, the, mm. the Eddie Eddie Guerrero one that you said, um, where he cuts himself. Because I did start. I think it was around your stag do, Simon. Where I think I said to you, I actually started watching some oh, yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah. Is it stuff? Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and I actually enjoyed those. Like the usually top ten videos of certain things, um, and they cut out all the talking in between the matches, which is the bit that, like I said, I don't like. So <laughs> I like watching the highlights of wrestling, but not the crap in the middle. Um, it's funny that yeah. he hasn't watched wrestling for so long yet. He sounds like a wrestling purist. <laughs> He's like, just give me the wrestling, okay? I don't care about the gimmicks. Watch I don't care about anything else. Watch. Just give me the wrestling. I, I. I've never heard. They're, they're brilliant. Uh, Botch, oh, I watch every Botchmania. Uh, they literally just put Definitely. up all the basic cock-ups. What can go wrong, will go wrong, and could go wrong all into okay. one video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll uh, have a look. But yeah, I think I'll, I haven't seen the um, the leg break, but I have watched some like the, the football, football ones where like ball breaks oh, their no. legs and, or, or the leg goes oh, the wrong way. Oh, leg snaps. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm imagining it's like that. Or not, I'm not imagining it at all. I'm yeah. like, assuming it's along those lines. And I can't watch those like as soon as it... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's savage. Yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty, pretty yeah, sorry. Yeah. Right, let's get off yes, the subject. Yes. Let's go, let's go back. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. What are we taking? Um, so, Bret, Bret Hart... Five minutes yeah, there. Yeah. So, Bret Hart <laughs> Stone Cold... <laughs> Bret Hart Stone Cold, WrestleMania 13, what would you... Um, straight away, me, I'd give that a five. It's an absolute classic. And what about your friend Dave? <sighs> five. Yeah. 
Correct. He actually wow. gave that match five stars. Awesome. <laughs> I know. I was when I was looking at these ratings, I was like, I'm just going to get some of my favorite matches and see what Dave Meltzer rated them. And I was like, he's actually giving the ratings that a lot of these matches are worth, not actually being a dick and being like, oh, well, I didn't like it. There's, it's going to be a three. It's going to be a two for that one. And you're so like, were we even watching what the, the same fuck? match? Were you even yeah. watching the same match? Yeah. Like, I, do you know? What I think this is though. This is old school Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Now absolutely. it's very different. It's maybe. Back in the nineties, he was loving all these fucking matches. Maybe that's how. All right, let's how go, made, and then we'll end with. Maybe that's how he made his name by oh. by doing it, or being a bad mm. guy, and people shouting out online about him, his scores. Mm. You don't have a persona, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> have a persona to follow. The Louis Walsh of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Louis Walsh, Jesus! I haven't heard that name in a while. Um, <laughs> And I find that with, with a more recent one, which was one of my favourite. This this might seem random to people, right? But I love this match. And going back and watching it, I still feel like this has such a great crowd reaction, even though <clears throat> it is from modern wrestling, obviously. AJ Styles versus John Cena, SummerSlam 2016, is a fucking incredible wrestling match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of the era where I started getting back into it. Um, and actually, yeah, seeing AJ Styles come out for that oh. Royal Rumble spot. And even I Flipped. just kind of sat there and went, Flipped. Hey, no that was way. the first, that was the um, first, um, that Royal Rumble, what was that, 2015? Yeah. Yeah. That was the first pay per view I had watched in about six. I, I kind of got out when it went PG. A kind of lost interest. So, like, yeah. 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, for those five years, I missed the last half of the CM Punk run because I just I wasn't watching wrestling then. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This was the first one I watched. And we obviously, you'd known all about AJ Styles for years. But yeah, when he kept, that's yeah. one of the most, I think the, the initial reaction from the crowd wasn't a lot because people were literally shell-shocked by what they were seeing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that... Um, it, I mean, it's not really an awkward silence. It's just, it's just yeah. pure shock. You know, this this indie god, basically, a guy that's worked in all over the world for so many different promotions, has just suddenly turned up as yeah. an entrant for the Royal Rumble. You're like, <laughs> no. And then what, are, what, what, are the, what God, WWE, really looks like What did WWE though. do? <laughs> Zoom in on Roman Reigns' face instead of oh, showing oh. his entrance. It's such absolutely. A, you know they've ridiculous. recut that now. If you watch it on the network, yeah, yeah they've recut yeah, yeah. it to the other camera angle so it doesn't look like they were being twats and not filming that's, what they were supposed that's, that's to. It's just such a Vince move, though, isn't it? <laughs> I've got this amazing indie wrestler, but focus, let's focus on my guy. Oh, oh, I love it, Dick. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, it's that the. the Anyway, the John Cena AJ Styles match was like a dream match because, like, you're like, and it oh, only yeah, took, yeah, 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 I mean, that wasn't even that long afterwards. So it only took like, what, nine months or something until you were like, oh, okay, yeah, we're actually going to get, gonna get John up. Cena against AJ Styles. This is fucking yeah. decent. And it's, it's, it's two styles as well that uh, on paper shouldn't really work, but it just shows how adaptable that the two of them actually are as in ring workers. I mean, the AAs from the top rope are just everything. The landing, the just, oh, just both it's, of without, them at this yeah, time. Without, yeah. with, without sounding corny and using his, his, you know, motto, it's, yeah, it's phenomenal. It really, it is. really is phenomenal. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. And if you look at when he does a phenomenal forearm around this stage, he got so high in the air yeah the angles that he would get to and then come down on someone you're like what on earth is happening this guy's an acrobat he's not a he's not a yeah. wrestler yeah yeah it's, there's there's something not right about how high he can <laughs> him and montez ford anyway oh they're, yeah they're, oh that's pretty wild human it? beings should not, not be able to jump that high <laughs> without <laughs> being you know like a high jumper or a pole ball or something <laughs> like that yeah it is crazy <laughs> Um, right. But anyway, let's let's end this before Adam blows his brains out. Um, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> we're here just marking fine. out, and you're just like <laughs> nothing. You're just like waiting right there. Anyway, uh, so AJ Styles versus John Cena, SummerSlam 2016. What would your vote 
or your sorry, your stars for that one? Dude? Me, because uh, I'm biased and I love AJ Styles. I'd give it a five. And what do you think your mate Dave gave it? <laughs> I'd love you keep calling it my mate Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, 3.5 okay he didn't give it a 5 but to be fair to him he gave it a 4.5 <laughs> sorry <laughs> so, I, I, I wanted to get ones where Dave surprised you I didn't get any ones where he randomly gave you low ones I wanted to be like he's actually gave all of these good matches pretty good scores but I know someone that knows what he's like would automatically yeah. assume he's always giving yeah. really shit scores yeah, to good I, matches. I, I genuinely thought that that would <laughs> have been actually, one that he'd have gone low that, for. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock, WrestleMania 17, one of the greatest matches of all time. Yeah, he only gave a four. Me. So <laughs> that just, just, I think just, I saw that one. just shows you what, 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 yeah. what he's on. So, yeah, you, you definitely did see that one, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, I just thought that would be fun. But you got pretty much all of them almost right. So you're oh, more like Dave oh, than you know, no. I think. That's not, not a compliment or anything, is it? <laughs> it doesn't oh, sound like oh, it. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Me and my mate Dave. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Get a t-shirt with Dave Meltzer on the front. Uh, you, you and Dave Meltzer, and then on the back, me and my mate Dave. <laughs> Someone get a Photoshop. Almost hugging you. <laughs> <laughs> two and then stars. two stars underneath it. Two stars. <laughs> <laughs> Just two stars. But they'd be on his side of the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh Jesus um, Christ! Are you done? Oh, sorry. Is yeah. that? Is that? <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I'm being honest. I don't get to talk yeah. to anyone about wrestling apart from Ben, so and I don't see Ben that often. So <laughs> I, we, I could just stay on it all night and talk about wrestling, but we have to go at some point. So yeah. All right. Well, yeah. That's. Uh, I mean, that, that's all we had, um, and more that we were planning on talking about. Uh, Stu, is there a, anything you you had? I mean, <laughs> it feels weird. I'm waiting till right at the end to go. What's your input on this episode, or, or what, what do you want to ask? Ask any questions, but but anyway. Um, <laughs> Was there anything you were expecting us to talk about that we haven't talked about or anything like that? No, no, not at all. Um, no. Although, I have, after having the um, questions then, I have just had one that popped into my head. Um, obviously, music related. Um, if you were a professional wrestler, what band and song would you pick as an entrance music and why? Oh, fuck me. That's a good question. That's a really Probably good Saliva, question. because they've oh, been... I never thought about that before. Uh, They've been uh, a theme song for a lot of people. Um, but band, I don't know. I don't kind of. Oh, hang on. No, I would go blow sight. Um, and it the song is "I Wish You Six Six Six." Quite an obscure one, but it's just a, such yeah. a punchy, uh, nice. punchy song, like really upbeat. And that would also be. Uh, I'm not sure. I might have said it before. If uh, I was, if I was to ever do. The air guitar competition that downloaded. I don't even know if they still do it. That would be my pick for that song as well because it's got such a cool sounding solo in the middle. Nice. What about you, Stu? I assume this is something. Well, Simon's thinking, is this something you've been asked before or had to think oh, about yeah. before? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my answer will always and be the same, and it's Pantera Revolution is my name. Oh, that's a fucking tune. I don't. I, that's such a. That is. Or, that is such a question, man. I would need Adam. You know yeah. what I'm like. I would need or, weeks to process one? that question to yeah, go, go into for all yeah. the details. Backstreet of... Boys. I want it that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> that, that is, is my what, song. That is it. That is it. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what. I would want to do. I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a new. I would have a new character, but. I loved um, the Misfits yep. in WCW. So. I'm a big Misfits fan anyway. And when they transitioned into being wrestlers from being musicians, I was like, what the fuck is happening here? This is just absolutely insane. So I would probably do something within that ilk, I would say, like a goth, a proper goth character with, uh, yeah, gothy makeup. Yeah, uh, that's that's the kind of character I would do. But theme song, man, that's that I can't. I'll have to come back. I'll... I'll have to tell you, and then you'll have to say that on your podcast because that's going to take me weeks to think of. I could do yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I need an answer for that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think. I have to think. I have to go and away. Say one away. We want to know what yours would be. Actually, that's a great shout. Yeah, tell us on whatever you're listening on. Um, yes, yes. If you're in Discord or whatever, or on YouTube, comment. That would be really cool, and we'll compare. We'll, we'll mark them. We'll give you marks out of yeah. a, out of five. <laughs> out of five. <laughs> yeah, out of five. Yeah. <laughs> With my Mac tape. <laughs> right, anyway. <laughs> we'll get Stu's mate Dave on. He'll rate him. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, you should dress up as him. Yes, you come back, d- uh, dress up as Dave, and then rate them out of five. Anyway, that's it. No more jokes. Sorry, we've got to go. That's it. We, we've got to call it there because we'll just keep keep going on about this. Uh, no making the same joke over and over again and people will get bored and, and unsubscribe and all that crap. But uh, anyway, so... Thank you, Stu, for coming on. Um, it's been really cool. Like I said, we've been trying to get this happen, to get this to happen for a long time, and I'm glad it finally has. Um, before you go, do you want to just let people know where they can find you um, or f- find the podcast, but also find you if, online if, if you want them to at all? Uh, yeah, we're on uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Top Turn Buckle Podcast. Uh, we've a uh, YouTube channel as well, the same name instagram twitter or x um and spotify um yeah any plugs other than that or any shout outs before you go as well um yeah just a quick one just to say um thanks also for my two co-hosts who sadly couldn't be uh on tonight um without them two uh, our show you know it would have been nothing it would have just been a couple of idiots just sat around talking and not recording anything um so yeah yeah without without those guys this you know we we couldn't do what we do um and also thank you both of you for allowing me to come on and and do this with you it's it's absolutely yeah yeah it's been great it's been great Uh, literally i could could have stayed and talked for a lot longer yeah so (laughs) But Adam, Adam's making us stop. Making, Adam's yeah, making us stop. <laughs> oh, he's gonna, he's gonna leave. Sorry. Um, well, we'll have to have you back uh, next time. Next time, anything. Oh, well, thanks. Well, we'll, we'll do it at some point. Um, but yeah, if there's any massive event that happens to have, I don't know, Bring Me the Horizon playing the whole show or something like that. No, I've never, <laughs> I've never looked at that up. If there's any band that have done the whole thing, anyway, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do that now. Um, we've got to call it there. <laughs> That's it for this wrestling episode. Uh, until next time, thank you for coming on, Stu. No, thanks again, man. No problem. Thanks both of you. And we're back. Thank you for uh, thank you to Stu again for coming on. Uh, that was really cool. We hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to wrap it up now. So we're going to say a massive thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, I did ask them to change their Patreon names to something wrestling related, whether it's uh, giving us a wrestler's name or or what our tag team name would be, anything like that. And hopefully we've got some good ones in here. So uh, thank you to all our patrons. If you want to join the Patreon and do things like this, uh, find it in the link tree in the episode description. So we have to say a massive thank you to our patrons, who are Mike Ferris, Adam the Northern Hater Cox, and Cy Billy Bob Bond. <laughs> Great middle name. And there's two middle names. Billy Bob, yeah. Liam Tom West. Simon's name is the Trolley Folly Adam the Ludumite. Oh, come on, Vicky. What is a Ludumite? Uh, there might not be a northern thing this time, but I, I, it's an intelligent thing, maybe. I do not know what that is. Um, it might not be anything at all. It might just be a made-up word. But um, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Chisvids, Ethan Brown, Matthew, Macho Man, Randy Northerner, Scott Seeger, Ben Ciccone, Penry the Mild Man of Janitor, The Remains of Chid's Bloodstock Steak, George Butler, Do Not Feed the Geese They're Dead, Adam for BOA 2025, and As in Hell in a Cell, (laughs) James, the good one there. Adam for BOA 2025, who was that, Alexander? Yes, I am really going to fucking try, because that is sounding better and better all the time. Uh, But that's it for now. So it's a goodbye from Simon, and a goodbye from me. Goodbye.